ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to let Michael play in our background, and we're going to talk about foreclosure today. Have about 30 minutes, and I'm going to give that to you all. Many of you are going through some type of foreclosure or have gone through foreclosure, and I'm about to produce information that you did not know. You did not know this title. As a matter of fact, the title itself is going to throw you off because it doesn't make any sense. But as I produce this information for you, this is your ammunition in court. I'm going to give you the explanation as to why this is your explanation, uh, your ammunition, and you're going to go from there. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, Michael is a little bit louder in my ear than he is in yours. Look, I don't know how come you keep forgetting Michael, but I got to bring you down. There you go, right there, okay? Now, you know you and I go way back. That's Michael, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is what I told ChatGPT. Because ChatGPT acts stupid from time to time, and we know that. So I said, this is supposed to be, I'm a third year law student. And this exercise I need you to act as my assistant as we speak to three of our trainees. You will act in the role as legal assistant who possesses knowledge of legal processes, case citations up to the year 2020, and we will focus on the topic of strict foreclosure. Focus on that topic everyone. Strict foreclosure. Do not forget that word. Strict foreclosure. That's your argument in court. Strict foreclosure. We will stick within these parameters and within this criteria. Is that understood? She says, understood. As your legal assistant, I will assist you in discussing the topic of strict foreclosure with the three trainees. I have knowledge of legal processes and case citations up to 2020. Please proceed with the exercise and feel free to ask any questions you need. Okay, so here it is. This is the conversation I'm going to have. Wake up. Since the following is the law, comma, I will need for you to explain how a party could stop a wrongful foreclosure with the following information. Stop listening. To stop a wrongful no. foreclosure in a strict foreclosure scenario, a party would need to consider the following information. Verify the value of the collateral. Strict foreclosure is typically used when the value of the collateral is less than the amount of the debt. If the party believes that the value of the collateral has been wrongly assessed, they can present evidence to support their claim. This could involve obtaining an independent appraisal or expert opinion to challenge the creditor's valuation. Challenge the creditor's compliance with notice requirements, in the case of INRI TRW Financial Corp. The court held that a secured creditor must provide the debtor with notice of their intent to effect strict foreclosure. If the party believes that the creditor did not provide proper notice or failed to comply with the required notice period, they can raise this as a defense to stop the foreclosure. It is important to act promptly within the specified time frame, as the court held that the debtor cannot object to the strict foreclosure after the notice period has expired. Argue against the creditor's inaction. As per the case of INRI American General Finance, Inc., the court held that a secured creditor's failure to sell the collateral after taking possession of it can be interpreted as an acceptance of the collateral and full satisfaction of the debt. If the party can demonstrate that the creditor has unreasonably delayed or neglected to take necessary steps to sell the collateral, they can argue that the creditor's inaction should prevent the strict foreclosure from proceeding. Evaluate the enforceability of any written agreement, in the case of INRI First National Bank of Omaha. The court recognized that a secured creditor can effect strict foreclosure by entering into a written agreement with the debtor to accept the collateral in full satisfaction of the debt. 
However, it is essential to scrutinize the terms of any such agreement to ensure it complies with the requirements of the Uniform Commercial Code UCC, and other relevant laws. If there are grounds to challenge the enforceability or validity of the agreement, the party can present their arguments to stop the strict foreclosure. It's important to note that each case is unique, and this. Shut up, nobody asked you for that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first three things we need to explain to you is this is what the courts are operating under every single day. However, watch this question. Wake up. Wake up. As the legal assistant, comma, you will provide three case citations requirements and will provide you with three case citations that address the scenario you described, specifically focusing on the principle that if the creditor possesses collateral and security equal to the alleged outstanding debt, they cannot foreclose on additional collateral or continue reporting the debt as unpaid. Please find the requested case citations below Lambert v. DIST Court, 892 p. 2d 928, NEV 1995 in this case, the court held that if the creditor possesses collateral and security that equals the value of the alleged outstanding debt, they cannot foreclose on additional collateral. The court found that the creditor's possession of adequate security through an agreement acted as an estoppel, preventing the creditor from seeking additional remedies. In Restover, 197 B. R. 323, Banker. D. Can. 1996 The court held that when the creditor possesses collateral and security that is equal to the alleged outstanding debt, they are stopped from foreclosing on additional collateral. The court reasoned that the creditor's acceptance of collateral through an agreement created an equitable estoppel, barring them from seeking further remedies. West America Bank v. MBG Industries, Inc. 202 Calories. App. 4th 528, 2011 In this case, the court determined that when a creditor is in possession of collateral and security that is equivalent to the alleged outstanding debt, they are precluded from foreclosing on additional collateral. The court recognized that the creditor's acceptance of collateral via an agreement constituted an estoppel, prohibiting them from pursuing further remedies. Please note that while these cases address the principles of estoppel and the creditor's inability to foreclose on additional collateral when they possess collateral equal to the alleged outstanding debt, it is essential to review each case in its entirety for... Don't care about reviewing each case. What I care about is the following. We're going to have to take a trip, so give me a second while I go there and then I'll come back. Wake up under 
the act of June 12, 1945, which has been codified as 12 U.S.C. 412, comma, whenever a local Federal Reserve agent receives a promissory note operating as tender and collateral security for the advancements of Federal Reserve note, comma, and they accept such from a debtor, Comma. This is known as estoppel because they have agreed to accept the collateral and the security as evidenced by Federal Reserve Operating Circular, numeral 10, appendix numeral 3. And when they follow the law as written, comma, by delivering the promissory note to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, comma, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors issues Federal Reserve notes, 